Howdy, howdy, Chris here. Welcome back to Garage Noise. In today's episode, we'll be painting a fender on this Dodge truck. We'll be painting it with a base coat, clear coat finish. So I'm gonna share with you step-by-step -step procedures on how to use a base coat, clear coat finish so you can get good results on your repair or restoration project. So let's dig in and get started. So Darius is uh, masking this off right here, but this is what we'll be painting. Today, we've got a spot right here where we're gonna blend the color here and then we're gonna clear coat this fender. So the first thing we're gonna do is mix up the color. Okay, so this is the color here. This is a brilliant black, it's a code PXR. This is Nason XL is the paint. Now, I purchased this at my local O'Reilly's. They were able to mix it up for me to the factory formula. We're gonna go ahead and paint it this color today. Now we're using this uh, Spray IQ mixing cups as a disposable cup system. And the way we mix this up is this paint mixes up two to one. So we're gonna find our two to one mixing ratio right there at the bottom of the cup. We'll put in two parts paint and then we'll go to the one column and put in one part reducer. This particular paint does not take a activator or a hardener. We're gonna give it a little mix. And we're not gonna need a ton of paint. We're just gonna mix up a few ounces of this. Now we're gonna mix up some reducer. The reducer I'm using is this USC medium urethane reducer. Now we'll just snap on the cap here. Gotta make sure it's sealed. So I, there it's sealed, I lift it up. Make sure it's all nice and tight and sealed. We'll put, lock on the collar. Okay, the paint gun we're using is the AeroPro A610. This is a low volume, low pressure paint gun. Works really well with small compressors. Or if you're working out of your garage or at home, this produces a very little overspray, so it's very, it's very good if you're working out of your garage. And it'll save you on materials because it uses a lot less materials because of the low volume, low pressure aspect of it. It only uses about 3.5 to 3.9 CFMs of air. So if you have a small compressor, this will work really well. Okay, let's take a look at this fender. So if you're doing this kind of repair at home and you're repairing something on your fender and you need to paint it, you need to prep out the surface for paint. So we are just blending the color here and then we're gonna clear this entire panel. So in order to prepare the rest of this fender for clear coat, what you need to do is you need to use a six or 800 grit sandpaper to sand this smooth. Basically what you wanna do is you wanna knock off all the shine and get a good scratch in this, like a 600 or 800 grit scratch so that clear coat will adhere properly. Now, if you're prepping out your primer, you always wanna finish sand your primer with 600 grit for base coat clear coat. Now this panel has been washed several times with wax and grease remover, isopropyl alcohol, and we're gonna wash it one more time with isopropyl alcohol. So I've got a clean microfiber towel here. I've got 70% isopropyl alcohol. We're just gonna spray it down and wipe it down one more time. And then what we'll do is we're gonna tack rag it off with a tack cloth and I'll show you that in a minute. But you wanna make sure this surface is nice and clean. Now I know this particular vehicle has had some dressing put on it. So it's had some armor all or something under the hood. He had just purchased this from a dealer. So I wanted to make sure this is clean so we don't have any kind of fish eyes or reaction when we apply our base in clear coat. Now you notice I'm wearing gloves and the reason I'm wearing gloves is so I don't transfer any oils from my fingers to this panel. Now that we have it all washed, we're gonna use a tack cloth. Now this is a brand new tack cloth here. This is the brand I like, I prefer. Uh, it's crystal tack cloths. It's a, it's a sticky tack cloth. Now some of the some tack cloths are not as sticky. I prefer one that's sticky, okay? What you wanna do is you wanna unwrap this fully and just kinda of let it breathe. Um, and then we're just gonna wipe it down right before we go ahead and apply our base over this primer. So we'll wipe this down. We're gonna put one coat of base on this primer area. I'm just concerned about covering the primer and the scratches around it at this point. I'll show you how we blend into the rest of the panel later on. But the first coat, we just wanna get on the primer, 
get it all covered. We'll let it flash off for 15 minutes and then we'll apply our second coat. This is removing any lint or loose dust that might have landed on this panel. Put my paint mask on and we'll apply our first coat of paint. That's it, we'll let it flash off. If you look closely here, we got a little reaction in our first coat of base, okay? Not a big deal. We're gonna let this completely flash off and then we'll put a drier coat on. Sometimes if you put your first coat on wet, this has had some dressing put on it or some silicone. So it's very easy to have that react a little bit. So what we wanna do is let this flash off and then we'll apply our second coat a little bit drier and that should get covered and it won't affect our finish at all. But if you're concerned about it, it doesn't hurt anything to put a dust coating on first, just so you introduce that paint to the surface. You can see we're fish-eyed just a little bit. I'm pretty certain that's because I put it on just a little too wet right there. So we're gonna spray another coat on this primered area, a lighter coat to cover that a little bit better. Now that's not gonna affect the finish because we'll get a couple coats of paint on it and it'll be fine. This is totally dry, so I'm gonna just tack this off real quick. And we'll just put a lighter coat on here. And we'll let it build up a little bit. We'll let that flash off and then we'll take another look at it. Let's take a look at it, show you what we got here. You can see that area is covered. No problem with it. Now we can put it on a little bit heavier on this coat. So this will be our final co coat before we do our blend out into the panel. I am gonna run a tack cloth over it real quick, just lightly. Now let's spray one more coat of base on. And then I'm just going out a little bit farther. Make sure I, any fine scratches out here that I might've missed, we get a coat, coat on those. Now we'll let that flash off. We'll do our drop coat or our blend, and then we'll be ready to clear this. And I'll show you how we do the drop coat next. Okay, so typically when we're spraying our base coat, we're gonna be about five or six inches away and we're gonna spray it where we can overlap about 80%. So you wanna overlap your passes about 80%. Now, what we're gonna do in our final coat is we're gonna coat this. And then when we come out here to do the drop coat, all we have to do is go from that five inches to about seven inches away and dust it on. We don't wanna get a lot of color up here because we don't wanna we don't want the color to mismatch from the hood. So we want to keep the color down. We don't want to get any color towards this door. Now this color is not going to have a problem matching because it's a black. Okay, now I'm going to back off and do the blend. I just bumped up the air pressure there a little bit because the droplets were just a little bit too big. So I bumped up the air pressure. We fanned it out, did our drop coat out here, and now we're gonna have a perfect blend. We'll allow this to flash off for about 10 minutes. Uh, meanwhile, let's go mix up the clear coat. Okay, so while that's flashing off, we're gonna mix up some clear coat here. The clear coat we're gonna use today is the, the U-Pole Spot Panel Clear 2892. And then we're going to use uh, some slow hardener. So we'll use some slow hardener 2333. It's important to use the right speed hardener for the temperature you're spraying in. Um, today it's about 80 degrees. So we're going to use a slow hardener. Liner in. This mixes up four to one. 
we're not going to need a ton of clear so we're just going to mix up uh it what's well, equivalent to about four ounces i believe here uh, so we put the clear in now we're going to put the activator in i don't i don't ever reduce my clear coat some people do but this clear coat is a not a high solids clear if you had a high solids clear i think you can reduce it maybe like 10 percent reducer but you always have to check the manufacturer's recommendation your technical data sheet for that purpose i don't recommend reducing your clear coat okay so we got that snapped in we'll lock in the collar lock on our gun and we're ready to go let's go spray some clear coat okay we're going to make this real simple on this low volume low pressure paint gun we're going to set it at about 30 psi i might bump it up to about 31 32. we're going to the fluid volume which is this knob here we're going to open up to two and a half turns out from closed two and a half okay we're going to have our fan pattern wide open which is wide open right now and what we're going to do is we're going to apply one medium wet coat we're going to overlap 80 percent you want to have a consistent speed and a consistent distance now the distance and the speed can directly affect how this clear coat lays down so if you're closer to the panel you're going to get more material on that panel you need to be moving a little quicker I usually spray around five to six inches away at a pretty good pace. So because this fender has a lot of silicone on it, I'm gonna go ahead and lay down a dust coat of clear first, just to introduce this clear to the surface so we don't have any reaction. So that is our first coat. We put it on a little bit dry because I don't want any reaction because this is covered in so much silicone. Uh, even though we washed it probably about six times, I don't want any fish eyes. So we'll let this flash off and then we'll hit it a little bit heavier on our second coat. See, it's a little bit dry around the edge. I didn't quite pull the trigger all the way. We'll see how it looks after we hit it with the second coat. And if we even have to, we can put a third coat on, but I don't think it'll be necessary. Okay, we're ready for our second coat. I'm not gonna pull the trigger all the way as we lay down this clear. Um, I'm probably gonna pull it about halfway. So now we can take a look at this after it's had time to flow out. Minimal amount of texture, very OEM-like finish. A few little particles of dust. In fact, if it wasn't for the few particles of dust, we probably wouldn't have to you know, buff this. But 
we are going to cut and buff this a little bit just lightly just to remove any imperfections listen up if you found this video helpful do me a favor leave me a comment down below consider subscribing to the channel and if you want to learn more about paint and body repair check out one of these videos now i appreciate each and every one of you watching and remember you can't get your project done if you don't get in the garage and make some noise